Good day, everyone. Hope you've all been blessed. Exciting shave for me today and hopefully for you as well. Today's shave, I'm gonna get right into it, is gonna be with Spartacus. And why this is monumental for me is because I have not, up until this point, used the A&E or club soap base. So this is a goat milk, lanolin, and tallow-based formulation. It's fantastic. I've got a lot of buddies in the community and everyone has been asking me why, oh why, have I never tried this formula yet? For a lot of folks, it's in their top five. For some folks, it's in their top three. And for some folks, it's number one on their list. And so I've not gotten around to using it yet. And there's been a number of reasons for that. I don't know that it's been uh, specifically deliberate. It's just been one of those things where I've had my favorites. Uh, you folks have heard in previous videos kind of my thought process around how I pursue and approach this hobby. And I just haven't gotten to it. So I keep getting nudged and I decided to go after it and I picked up this one. So I went into West Coast Shaving. They had this one and they had Tertius. And of the ones that I liked, I preferred this one. Now this is an adaption of Creed's Aventus. So I know some of you are gonna yawn at that because there's been several adaptions of Creed's Aventus. It's a great scent. And a lot of soap makers have felt like it was a good move to do an adaption of that because it's a very revered scent. And I think that's a good thing. It's good, I like it. Um, fine accoutrements, for example, their platinum is an adaption of Creed Aventus, and I do like that scent. I, it's not my favorite of the fine line, but I do like this adaption better than that adaption. So as you can see, the Spartacus label, it kind of uh, alludes to manliness a bit, and a lot of, of the labels on this particular line of soap. So you've got A&E. All right, already got the brush loaded. See what kind of lather I can make with this, and hopefully it's not so slick that I skid up and get my hat. Now, one of the things I noticed, I did a live shape with this on my very first use, so I've only used this one other time. And this is my very first go. I don't have anything proceeding with A&E or the club on this. And like I said, years ago, when I was new to this, um, as it related to Peter Charcalis, it was the club. And they were very popular. He had a lot of different fragrances. His soaps were very thematic. But his branding and his marketing and his labeling, his themes, all that is geared towards male grooming. And he does a good job with it. Now I do know he's based out of Connecticut. He does do a lot of traveling. And I think a lot of the, that traveling that he does is to create collaborations for his business. And then I think a lot of that also is for him to gather inspirations for future scents, for him to kind of go into different parts of the world. I know he does a lot of traveling to Europe and places like that and probably places all over uh, the United States domestically. But I think he's constantly looking for inspirations for new fragrances and scents. And um, he does a good job. Like his, his scents, there's some scents that I smell from different artisans. And I use the word artisan because he does explain on his site that it is a small family owned business. And that's kind of the, uh, the essence of artisan small operation, handcrafting things. There are some artisans that specialize in what I like to call very fun scents. You smell them, they're fun, they smell good, they may not be, you know, now for me, I'm constantly looking for perfume type scents because I'm a business guy, I'm constantly in professional settings and I do need to smell like a professional. <laughs> so I do need to smell the part and I, I don't really like to use a lot of fun scents while I'm out travel. I do travel a lot for work and uh, you know, I'm a shirt and tie type of business. And you know, I meet a lot of folks that own their own businesses that do distribution for us. And so I've got to smell like a million bucks. And so I will say Peter's fragrances do deliver on that. They, they're very perfume like, I always say cologne. But there's just a difference. The scents that he makes, I can tell, are designed for everyday use, for professional use, for manly use, for just intoxicating scents. 
Um, I wouldn't classify too many of his scents as fun, and that doesn't mean they're not good. I'm just saying they're, to me, they're more cologne-esque, perfume-esque. And I like that. Personally, I think it's terrific. So, this thing is forming wonderfully. I can add some more water to this. I just try to be careful because it's badger. Badger is very easy to oversaturate because all of the hydrogen stays in the hairs. And then as you'll see, as it did earlier, it starts to collect at the bottom of the knot. And then I gotta kinda go get it. Now, this is a very malleable base. You can work with it. You can add a lot of water to it. You can probably have a ton more fun with like a synthetic or a bore where you're not getting a lot of the hydrogen in lather captured in the hairs. But I'm just digging badger these days and so that's what I went with. But this is very dense, it's very thick and when it's dry, and it has that element now, as I just looked at it again, but this lather has a nice sheen to it. It's got one of those mirror type sheens and I like that a lot. Now what that reminds me of a lot, the base that this is reminiscent of to me is Sterling. Now Sterling is not a goat milk base, it's just a tallow base. And the goat milk and lanolin, some of the different properties in this soap do do some different things than are delivered by the Sterling base. But as far as the finish goes, Sterling is the other base that I can think of that has that mirror-like sheen to it. So I've got my 34G, I've been excited to have this, and I've got a fresh Gillette Platinum blade in here. I've got substantial growth. This razor is magical. Now for me, as it relates to shaving, when I consider this hobby and what my expectations are therein, there is, uh, for the money I spend on these products, these tubs are gonna cost you around 18 bucks. The splashes are gonna cost you just as much. So you're looking at about $36 for a set. Now, uh, in the past, when I was just a daily shaver with canned goo and cartridge razors, you know, buying a can of goo would cost me three or four dollars and then you've got the cartridge deal that you got to deal with. But for the most part, if I'm spending this kind of money, you know, for most of us in the hobby, we're collectors, we're not just one product. You rarely meet someone that has one soap, one splash, one razor and they're off to the races. You're usually collectors, so those who you find in this hobby. That's why we do what we do. And that's why we call it a hobby. So. What I will say is my expectations now, I didn't have a lot in the beginning, but my expectations now are if I'm spending a considerable amount of money, I'm looking for an experience. To me, the hobby has transformed so much that, like I talked about in the beginning, the expectations are a lot higher and In the beginning, I didn't pay attention to a lot of those things like properties and stuff like that. I was just looking to make a good lather. And that's what I think you're trying to do in the beginning is just to make the products work, to, to nail your technique down, to hone it in, to perfect it, 
to figure out what scents you like and don't like, what you're trying everything, you're buying everything. But now I'm looking more for comfort. I'm looking for the experience. Face feel is huge for me now. In the past, I didn't really give too much credence to that. But today, um, I think we're artisans are really stepping up the game. I think we're, they've really evolved is we've gone more to property centric type products than we have just making a product that will make a voluminous lather. So. When I compare it to older products that I have, as I've done a few purges in my den, when I compare today's products to products then, and you know, there was some flack, some heat that we witnessed in the community from folks that would say, you know, artisans were just trying to do this and that and scam and make more money by creating new bases and stuff. And I don't think that was it at all. I think for a lot of artisans, they were trying to perfect their base. I think as the community was evolving, as the hobby was evolving, I think they were trying to adapt to that. And you know, there's, uh, I'm in business and my company makes products. And the goal every year is to differentiate yourself from the competitor. And it's all about experience. That's the word that we kick around all the time. Experience, experience, the member experience, the member experience, the people that we serve. What's their experience like with us? How does it differentiate from our, from our competitors? And it's not always about being better than the competitor because sometimes they're just as good, but what differentiates you? What's your market? And so with the bar raise so high now, it's exciting. As I'm using this, it's a very fun formulation. Now, I talked about the scents being more perfume-esque, cologne-esque. I like that. For me, it's that's... That's what I'm looking for. And you know, if I can get a shave soap and a splash, which you guys know I have the matching splash. If I can get a shave soap and a splash for 36 bucks and smell like a million bucks all day without having to spend two, $300 on the actual bottle of cologne, that's a win for me. And I do know a lot of guys that buy the set like this, and then they also buy the cologne too, and that's cool too. Whatever you like to do, I probably would do it too. This is amazing, this has been a great shave. So this is a fantastic base and I think everyone should, if you're in this hobby and you're looking for top tier products, this is one of those. And Peter is kind of an intriguing figure in that as I hear more about him, there's some folks that are very close with him. I, I really don't know the guy personally, but there are some folks that do. And I know that Peter is um, the consummate businessman. I know he works very hard. And I know he um, is very passionate about what he does. And I like seeing that, you know, in, in, in business with the type of job that I have and the type of role that I have. When you're out there espousing a product, a brand, whatever it is that you do, you gotta do it passionately. You gotta do it 150%. Now I know that's impossible, but you gotta give it your all. And Peter, without question, is one of those. He does a lot of traveling. Um, And I can just tell from the interactions he's had with the community that he's constantly looking to perfect what he does, his base, his business, his model, his accessibility, his website. I can tell, I mean, even though he's small family owned, I can tell he puts everything he has into this. And he 
He does have a channel called Shaving with Sharky. That's the nickname. I don't know if he gave himself or that's what the community gave him. But that's the nickname he goes by. So you can take a look at his channel. I think I've only ever watched one or two of his videos. I'm going to check out some more. Again, not deliberate, but I know that uh, there was his channel had a lot of fans even before he became what he is today. So, like I said, I've watched the evolution of Peter Tarkalis over the years, and I know he's very well revered in the community. And. He just, you know, he differentiates himself. He really does. And, I, you know, as I look through the hobby and all the cast of characters that are out there, we've got a lot of great artisans, a lot of great personalities. And Peter has definitely differentiated himself, as have the other artisans as well. So some artisans you'll find have very subdued, reserved personalities. And others are just very outgoing but that doesn't mean their passion is any different. Just because their personality doesn't convey it the same way somebody else's does, doesn't mean that the passion is less or dissipated. It's just, I've met some very reserved artisans that are very passionate. And I've met some that Peter that are, the passion is all over their face. It's all over the place. This, was a spectacular shave. I'm looking forward. I've got a laundry list of Peter Tarkalis A&E club scents that I want to get. Definitely trying to get my den down to the items that I really use with frequency. I, I don't want to keep around stuff that I don't really use anymore. And Every year that goes by, I feel like the good Lord gives me more wisdom about how to handle this because there's a series of phases you go through here and then once in a while they'll repeat and they'll start over. But this was one spectacular phase and I, or a shave. It's a phase, not a phase this time. Um, but I will tell you that my face feels terrific. So... There are some soaps that I consider more economy brands, and then there's brands like this that I consider more premium brands. And this is definitely a premium brand. I can see why this base is a favorite amongst many. Now this is, the packaging is nice. I like the themes that he does, you know, Tertius and um, Little Fictions and Asian Plum and different things like that. But his themes, uh, which one's pink? I've seen a lot of the things that he puts together. And you can tell he's a very creative guy. And this has sort of a milky composition to it. But it smells every bit as good. This stuff feels... So again, when I'm talking about premium... the face feel I'm getting. So this one I enjoy and, and I've been very picky lately as it relates to splashes. And I get a div, now splashes have been a different expedition for me altogether because I get a different sensation from everybody's. Right now, hands down, my favorite splash is Oleo. And the reason that is, is I love that invigoration sensation you get. I talked about that in the last video, so I'm not gonna go into that again, but they're hands down my favorite. But this one is pretty amazing. Um, it's not as invigorating, but it's very nourishing. It really, um, and I talked about that with Noble Otter too. They make a similar type of splash where when you put it on, you can just feel that it's got nutrients for your skin. It's replenishing your skin and it just feels good. It's, it's a nice post-shave feel. It's a nice aftermath for the shave because you're dealing with a facial abrasion and it's that kind of experience for your skin, even though we don't realize it. So this stuff really kind of helps set your face back in order to set your skin back at ease. And it feels really good. I feel replenished. And that's how I, you know, that's the way I feel with this particular splash. Same thing with Noble Otter. 
The element that kicks it up for me on oleo is that invigorating rush that you get. It's not that sting from alcohol, but it just feels fantastic. It's like a rush after the shave. So anyways, guys, thank you for hanging in there with me and listening to me ramble on about wet shaving in this product. But Spartacus, definitely check it out. It's a winner for me. I can't wait to try some of the others in the A&E and club line. My first experience with it was definitely nothing short of spectacular. So I can see why folks love this to death. Anyways, God bless you guys. Have a great week. Till next time.